why do you think that there has been a supply shortage and if there is one which i think there definitely there is how can it be boosted and how can the supply be met with the current demand for vaccines so um, you know again uh, what was happening was that when we started the vaccination process in january um it was a little slow to take off you know because there was a fair bit of hesitancy um we started off in stages we of course prioritized our frontline workers our health line work, health workers uh, first and i think that was completely right because those are the people who are at the front lines even today um and and trying to battle against this virus and save lives so i think that was completely right that we prioritized you know health workers frontline workers for vaccination and then of course we prioritized the elderly because all the evidence we had up till then was that the risk of severe disease and and mortality is much more in older people you know much more in people above 45 above 50 now as i said that might change in the future we can't say because it's not a point in time you know data is constantly changing in this but based on the evidence we had till then uh, we picked up the most vulnerable groups for vaccination but there was a fair amount of hesitancy so actually uptake in the initial few weeks was quite slow in many states in many states it's not true that it was in all states but in many states the uptake was slow we were actually seeing vaccine wastage uh, we were seeing many doses going wasted uh, and that is something that we have consistently flagged to various states as well because vaccine is very precious you know we cannot afford to waste it so so i think that is uh, something that the vaccination process started off with now that we have had this surge Uh, we have also opened up to people above you know 18 years of age now a lot of that hesitancy has reduced so 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 why the supply is also seeming short is because you suddenly have a lot more demand uh, because ultimately it's that demand supply equilibrium you know all throughout um and and now it's seeming a little short because you have suddenly a lot of people you know who are saying that look we want to get vaccinated you know we we've had crores of people wanting to register and you know get vaccinated which is fantastic from the demand point of view i think that is completely the way we need to go on the demand side uh, so now therefore the supply is is being boosted in a very big way and there are multiple steps being taken here um, and i and i'll just very quickly outline those one is that we have boosted the capacity of our own manufacturers here so bharat biotech serum institute by june july you should see that they should be you know they should be able to be manufacturing many more doses a month than where they are today you know it could be doubling it could even be tripling Uh, the number of doses that they can actually manufacture a month so one is their capacity the other is we have brought in sputnik in fact sputnik rollout has just started today uh, so sputnik has come in now uh, or the united states is also uh, said that they will allocate a certain percentage of the uh, astrazeneca uh, doses to india that might not be very significant number but nevertheless it will it will all add up to our overall number and then yet further down the line we have uh, vaccines which we might expect from uh, orbindo pharma as well as zydus cadilla uh, so those are also uh, in stages of development where a few months down the line even you know we could hope uh, that one if not both of them gets approved so i would say that uh, in in at this point in time there's no disputing that that there is uh, an issue of supply uh, especially to match the massive demand that that we have now but within a month or two i would say that a lot of this bottleneck should clear up uh, and and a lot of the supplies should should go up in a big way so so i think it's very important right now that yes we only go to a vaccination center when we have a confirmed appointment because you don't want to be having crowding at the vaccination center and then the last thing you want is that the vaccination center becomes a super spreader so we have to be careful about this we should only go when we have a confirmed appointment um and and you know we are sure that the vaccine is going to be available um but i think in in a month or two you will see a significant change in the dosage availability in the country with all these efforts going on um you know in the background i think i think there will be a significant change of course private sector has already started to procure and and even provide to people under 45 like in delhi uh, the private hospitals some of the bigger private hospitals are already Uh, offering vaccination for people under 45 you know apollo and vedanta and fortis um so so i think you will start seeing that vaccination happening of people under 45 it's not that we won't have any vaccinations happening in may but i think from june july you will see the rate accelerating much much more um so i think that is what is you know uh, right now my hope uh, 
um, that the supply will really go up significantly, you know, just in a, in, in a few weeks from now, and will be able to cater to this, to this massive demand that hopefully we will see, you know, I, I again and again say that, that opening up is a very good idea. We do need as many people vaccinated as possible. So I, I would urge people that even if your vaccination is a little delayed, um, just have that little bit of patience, just hold on, just register yourself. And as soon as you have a vaccine available, just go and get yourself vaccinated, you know, because that is that is absolutely critical right now to save lives. Yes, yes, very true, ma'am. Uh, but however, we are also noticing that, as you said, there is a vaccine shortage problem and 11 states are currently suffering it. So my question to you is this, how is this, how is this a reality that out of the 28 uh, states in our country, only 11 states are facing a shortage and the others aren't? And if this is in fact reality, uh, how is the, uh, what, uh, exact factor is contributing to this vaccine shortage in only specific states in our country. Is this a logistic error? Is this a, a, is this a manufacturing issue? Uh, what is the exact cause of this? Um, yeah, it could be a combination, you know, of, of different factors here. Um, and of course, the demand, you know, the sheer demand um, some states are obviously, you know, population wise, very different from others. You know, we have so much diversity in our country that that is the nature of, uh, you know, how we need to operate. So it could just be sheer demand, uh, you know, outstripping the current supply. Um, and as I said, the demand has gone up a lot. You know, when we when we started in January, the, a lot of these same states uh, where we were not seeing so much demand. Um, uh, today we are seeing a lot of demand. You know, so so the picture is also changing and evolving. Um, based on what is happening on the ground. Um, so so I would rather than say that it's an outright shortage, I would say that it's a question of, you know, the, the, the supply not being able to keep pace right now with the sudden, you know, boosting of demand that we are getting. So I think that is the effort that we are making. And, and that is the effort the center is making um, at a national level. Now, you know, of course, the doses to states will be allocated uh, also based on their performance. Um, also, the vaccine wastage has been included as a criteria uh, when the center will be allocating vaccines to states. Um, they need to make sure that the wastage is minimum. Uh, and, and of course, it will be based on their performance and uptake. So allocation, of course, will be based on all those criteria. But at an overall level, the fact that the center is working to boost supply um, through both what we have, you know, currently boosting the manufacturing as well as bringing in additional vaccines that will eventually benefit all states, you know, because the more vaccines we have available in the country, the more, uh, you know, manufacturers we have um, and, and, the, and the more choice we have, eventually all the states will benefit from that. So I'm hopeful that even these states which are currently, you know, saying that we have this shortage or um, we are not able to keep pace with the demand. Um, in, in a month uh, or two, if not earlier, the situation to ease considerably. Um, uh, that, is, that is sort of my view and, and, and my hope because, I mean, really we're going after vaccination on a war footing right now. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. All right. Yes, certainly. Uh, and ma'am, then why are, uh, regarding the vaccination for, of people under the age of 45, why are the walk-ins not being allowed for that age group for vaccination, particularly? Yeah, because, you know, it is because of the supply issue right now. So, you do, as I said, you don't want people to walk in and then find that the supply is not there and then you have massive crowding at the centers and, you know, then it results in super spreader events, you know, because we have to be very careful that somebody coming to the vaccination center should not catch the virus, you know, because that that is that is really terrible uh, word of mouth, uh, you know, sort of uh, experience, you know, people will then start sharing that. Um, and then that will lead to more hesitancy, you know. In fact, just in the last few weeks, I've had some people saying, oh, I, I think I got the virus from the vaccine. And actually, they might not have got it from the vaccine. They probably have not. But they have might have got it from the vaccination center. You know, that is something which is very much possible. If they were not following the COVID appropriate behaviors, um, or if you know others were not following. So, so it's it's very important that we avoid overcrowding, we avoid crowding of any kind at these centers. And that is why walk-ins right now um, are not being encouraged or scheduled or allowed. But as soon as this supply situation eases. 
um, I, I am pretty confident that a lot of states will then start allowing uh, walk-ins also because as I said, we want to vaccinate as many people as quickly as possible. I think there's no doubt in that. But we don't want to do it in a way where our supplies are not enough and we have so many people lining up um, and then we result in you know more spread of the infection. So I think right now that is the only reason why you're seeing this. Um, but again, this situation should change. Um, I, I believe it should change pretty soon, as soon as the supply uh, starts ramping up much more. True, true, ma'am. Uh, and uh, you mentioned in one of your previous answers that even the private hospitals have now started pitching in to a very great extent and providing the vaccine inoculation to the age groups of 18 to 45 and rather to every age group for that matter. So with regards to that, we have noticed that the pricing of vaccines in private hospitals are actually quite high, going up to 2,400 rupees. So why do you think, ma'am, that, uh, I mean, uh, to rephrase it, uh, don't you think that these uh, prices are extremely high in the midst of a pandemic when there is a surge of unemployment and pay cuts for, the, for those individuals going to get the vaccine? Yeah, so, you know, a lot of these prices or these hospitals, even that I mentioned, for instance, right now, um, people who would go there would obviously be people who can afford um, and, and it's people like us, you know, we, 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 we can afford to pay that. We, we, we don't have an issue, you know, uh, paying 1200 or even 2000 for those vaccines. But, but that is limited to people like that. There's no doubt, you know, but, but that is true for the private sector in general, right? Even, even for private hospitals, it's only somebody who can afford uh, actually goes there, right? And that is why you need to have those government facilities, those public health facilities for people who cannot afford um, so, so that is why I'm saying that the vaccination is in multiple tracks. The, the free vaccination for, you know, people above 45 at the government of India centers continues. Um, the, the supply of vaccines from center to state, 50% free, again, that continues. Uh, a lot of states have actually announced that we will make vaccination free of cost. Uh, in, in in our states, a lot of states have announced already, and I'm hopeful that you know even more states will come forward and do that. So I think for a lot of people, the people who cannot afford, there should be enough of these other channels um, so that they don't have to rely on you know these sort of uh, pri big private hospitals, which anyway you know cater to a very small percentage. I think it's it's very important you know, and we we would know that that an Apollo or a Medanta or a Max. You know, they, they don't cater to the majority of the country's population, right? This is, they are catering to a very small percentage, but we are not, we are not engaging just the Apollos and the Medantas and the Maxes of the world. We are also engaging smaller private centers. So there might be smaller private centers also, which are offering it at, at, at more affordable prices. Uh, in fact, in Delhi itself, you know, there are many smaller private clinics, institutes, which are wanting to do this vaccination. Um, so they might come into the mix as well. And of course, there you might see a slightly differential pricing. But my point is that, you know, it is for people, these are places for people who can afford to pay. I think that is, and, and people who do want to go here, they can afford to pay. Uh, this option is there. But there will be plenty of other options and tracks for people who actually cannot uh, afford to pay. Because, because there's no doubt that such options will cater to a very small percentage. And so the other channels, whether it is the central government, the state government channels for the free vaccination as well, will remain open and in fact might go up. As I said, many states have already announced that we will do free vaccination um, for people under 45. And, and hopefully that, that might even increase um, in, in, in the days and ways to come. Again, as the supply situation becomes more stable, uh, a lot more states might come forward and do the same. So, so I think it's going to be a mix, uh, but certainly we're not expecting the majority of people to go in here and pay these kind of prices. I think that that, that definitely is not the expectation that, uh, you know, the government has. Certainly. And now, what would you like to say to quell the concerns of those Indians who feel that there is a vaccine storage incapacity? No, so storage has also been boosted significantly. In fact, when we, when we, when, when we started working on the vaccination program, uh, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just the manufacturing, uh, but we've also been boosting the cold storage facilities, the distribution facilities. Um, we brought in technology to try and steam, streamline the whole vaccination process in a big way. Um, and and so, so I think there is definitely, you know, in a country like India, that challenge is there. 
you know because uh, our public health system you know for years uh, is is one where we could have done a lot more to strengthen it and that is a matter of years of work i think again i just want to make this one generic statement that you know strong public health systems are not built in one year you know few months 10 months you know you you can you can do certain amount of preparation and of course you can always question in hindsight that could that preparation have been more could it have been better i think that is something that is definitely up for a uh, question and debate but public health systems in general are built over years and decades you know of of investment and so so yes it is true that in many parts of the country um, our facilities our whether it's storage whether it's our basic healthcare leaves much to be desired i think nobody can deny that you know that is that is true but whatever we could be doing um, either in the last few months or now to boost this uh, just to be able to tackle this current situation at least we have been working with the, the center has been working with the states to do that um, so so i think the concerns are valid um, but what one can say is that you know all possible efforts are being made at this point we are also trying to therefore bringing in the private sector in a big way not just to actually help with the front end but also to help with some of these back end back end issues to streamline them uh, to to help with some of these logistical issues as well um, and technology of course you know we are trying to use technology as best as we can so so i think a lot of efforts are being made um, but but yes definitely um, there are gaps in various parts of the country and a lot of those are historical uh, gaps as well you know which are which are very difficult to completely address you know in a matter of a few months uh, or a year or even a few years you know a lot of this work is actually work that needs to be done over decades um, which hopefully now after this pandemic all governments you know i'm i'm not blaming any one government or the other but all governments be it center be it state hopefully all of us will collectively realize that we really need to invest in the public health system you know because otherwise when you have a crisis um it's very difficult to quickly react you know that becomes very difficult you know because as i said crises like these are are affecting and crippling some of the best health systems in the world you know even even a sweden Uh, struggled so much you know when it had an increase in cases we've seen what's happened in in uk we've seen the us um so so my point is that it's such a large country with so much diversity if you are not consistently investing in your public health system center states private everybody then in a crisis you will inevitably be in a very difficult situation but right now the focus is on doing whatever we can at this point in time so that at least the immediate need Uh, can be addressed and i think that is what the center states you know all of us need to put our energies towards um, and then of course the longer term questions uh, will need to be addressed but we can do that once you know this is behind us namaste we hope you enjoyed this chitti media content please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel for our other social media links more content and to support our work please visit सी आई टी टी आई डॉट नेट धन्यवाद नमस्कार